Rita from Honest and Tasty and today we are making sumac or sumac french fries with a umami ketchup dip and a sour cream and garlic chive dip. Um, so I have some peeled already rinsed and peeled potatoes. These are russet potatoes, just your standard cheap potatoes and um, you want to make sure that you rinse them before you peel them because they are from the ground um, so you don't want to eat some dirt later on. Uh, so I'm just going to start making them into sort of like french, french fry shapes. So like matchsticks. So you can um, do whatever you want with these. You can bake them or you can fry them. Um, today I'm going to fry them but I bake them regularly too. Somar, or I think most people, most non-Middle Easterns <laughs> um, refer to it as sumac and it's actually that red sort of, it's like a red tangy powder. It's actually just pulverized sumac berries or sumac berries um, that are, have been dried and then it gives a sort of tanginess to whatever you're eating and as Persians we throw it on to uh, basmati rice um, that's cooked to the Persian way and so it's, it's got a little method to it there that's on my website if you wanted to find out how to make rice the Persian way, but we actually put it right on top of the rice and eat it with kebab, like chelo kebab, if you've heard of that before. Um, it's actually a really nice way to eat it because it gives a nice flavor and tanginess. Um, it's really, really yummy. I've got some canola oil here um, that's already been heated, and if you've got a thermometer, you want to heat it up to like three, 350, but I don't. So what I do is I take a wooden spatula and I take this end of it and I just pop it into the oil and if bubbles start forming right around it, it means it's hot. So if it's like, then turn it down a little bit, but if it takes a long time for any bubbles to form or if no bubbles form, then just turn it up a little bit. Um, then you should be good. Okay, so my oil is hot and it's about a couple inches deep and so more than enough to take all of these. And be careful, don't just throw them, sort of slide them in there because it will splatter. Just give them a minute move them around so they're not sticking together too much. I'm going to take them out because they've barely cooked and I'm going to put them back into the fryer. So I'm going to double fry them because this is how restaurants get their fries crispy. So they're just barely cooked. I just wanted to make sure that the insides were cooked. Um, and then we're gonna put them back in so that they can get nice and crispy. But first, you wanna make sure that the fries reach room temperature before you put them back into the fryer. So now I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna make the dip now. Let's do the umami ketchup first. So I've got um, about a third a cup of ketchup, a tablespoon of, um, what's this stuff called? Barbecue sauce. And <laughs> Now let's throw in some soy sauce. So umami, umami just means, um, so it, it's, it's something that's savory. Um, it's sort of like a separate taste, people say, like a different, that your taste buds can pick up on, but it's just it's very savory flavors. You know, like MSG, <laughs> that's umami. Um, but we can get away with not, not going out to, you know, fast food places that put that stuff in it and just make those flavors at home. So about a teaspoon or so of soy sauce goes in as well. It's not a lot of soy sauce um, in this because you're not going to be able to tell, oh, this tastes, this tastes Asian inspired. No, it's just going to be giving it some salty, good flavor. And then some Worcestershire sauce. Just eyeball it, but 
about a teaspoon, more or less. Last but not least, my favorite, chili flakes. You can put as many or as, you don't have to put any in there actually if you don't want to. But I actually, whenever I eat ketchup with fries, I always like to put a ton of black pepper in it. it might be a little weird for other people, but I like it. So this is good for me. Actually, I don't know if I even mentioned where I got the idea to make the somal fries from. I um, went to this restaurant. We've, we go to this restaurant in Chicago. Um, and it's called Diwali, and they are really a really nice Lebanese restaurant. Um, I'm pretty sure they're Lebanese. And they they bring out these fries. They have somal fries. They bring them out, and they're so delicious. And I, when I had them, I was just like, this is, like, I, I need to make this at home because these are too good to have to come back here every time that we want them, so. That was my inspiration. Plus, I always have an abundance of somal being Persian. So you can, you guys can buy somal at any sort of Mediterranean or um, Middle Eastern grocery store. I would definitely go get some. It's so good. For the sour cream and garlic chive dip, I've got um, sour cream in there. I have chives and I have garlic already. Um, and then, oh, two things, salt and pepper, and that's it. That's all that goes into this. A couple pinches of salt, a pinch of pepper, that's it. Let's mix them together. It's so easy. So you can, it's, you know, you can make sour cream and onion dip too. I just really like garlic and the chives have such a strong, pungent aroma. Um, which is very similar to what you would get with onions, so I do this because I do it because I like it. If you guys try this, please let me know how you like it. If anybody out there is watching and if anybody tries it, <laughs> please let me know because I am in love with these fries, um, with the somal. I just love somal. And so put them on french fries, yes, please. That's done, squared away. Last thing I'm going to do is chop up some parsley because it's the final thing we put on the fries. Um, so we, when we take them out of the fry fryer, we put salt, somal, and then sprinkle on some chopped parsley. Let's check on our fries. They're, they're pretty good. Easy to touch. Just about room temperature. So they're a little bit soft fries that we're gonna put back in to get really nice and crispy. Just like to make sure that all the pieces are separated. Okay, let's put the fries back in. And just make sure they're all separated and let them be for a few minutes or until crispy and golden brown. And they are so good. And with all the flavors that are going on in here, we have like umami overload. Okay, so mine are already probably been like three minutes, maybe more. I'm not looking at the time because I just look and see what they look like. If they look like they're done, then they're probably done. Ta-da! Okay, so right away we want to put our salt on because they're hot right now. Somal. So you can see what the somal looks like if you've not seen it before. It even smells tangy. It's not something that's gonna be all sour and, no, it's, it's not like that. It just gives really good, a hint of tang and really good flavor. So let's just throw it on. Some parsley. Look how beautiful that is, first of all. Not only are they gorgeous, they're delightful and crispy. So first, I'm gonna just have it. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So dip in the umami ketchup with the other side because I'm not double dipping. 
Mm-hmm. Such, if you make this ketchup and it's so easy to make, you're never gonna want regular ketchup again. Okay, now, sour cream and garlic chive dip. We're good, man. Call it a day, we're done. I will see you guys later. Go to honestandtasty.com where you can get all of my recipes. The ingredients are listed down below, but if you want the full recipe, go to my website where you can find it. Okay guys, I'll see you later, bye bye. Fun. Fun.